Today on Going Broke Buying Wood to Test Tools, we are going to look at Metabo HPT's new 18 volt one handed recip saw. This saw may not have the best specs that there is out there, but it does have some very cool features. We're going to go through this guy top to bottom. Stay tuned. About three days ago, someone commented that they like to use off-brand tools a little bit because at the job sites, their batteries do not get stolen. Now, Metabo HPT was formerly Hitachi Tools, right? So all the Hitachi slide-on batteries will work on this tool, and any 18-volt battery will work along with the 36 volt or 18 volt multi-volt batteries, although it makes it a little bit larger and obviously a little bit heavier, but they do have two different size multi-volt batteries out there. We are gonna test this tool out with both. Now this tool has 3,200 SPM, 3,200 strokes per minute, but it has a half inch stroke length. So that's fairly short compared to many others, but what this tool does do is except jigsaw blades. So that's different, right? Why would we want to use jigsaw blades in a sawzall or a recip saw, right? People are gonna call it what they're gonna call it. So interestingly enough to me, I find this kind of cool because now I could actually change this up, change how I hang on to this tool, adjust the forward shoe, and just simply use it as a jigsaw if I wanted. That's neat. It's got a good variable speed trigger. It is nice in that way and it's actually set up a little bit so I could see it being used as a jigsaw. Totally cool. One thing I don't understand is this little tail at the end. Uh, I'm actually kind of starting to get fond of it but if you use it with a 1P battery it has a little tail that sticks up. Is that to protect the battery or is that for me to use it as a hammer? I mean, it, it is kind of cool and I do see people do that. So it's one of those things you don't see a lot. Uh, again, 1P battery, it will still stand up with that, but it fits a lot better and stands up nicer with the 2P battery. Let's get to cutting. Obviously when Something takes a different blade like this, a jigsaw blade. I want to really try out the jigsaw part of it first. I'm going to extend this out a little bit more just to kind of give me some room to see what's happening. Just make a cut. Now, obviously by extending it out, I'm getting more blade deflection with the jigsaw, but at the same point, it works and cuts well. And if you were in a situation where you had to make this style of cut and you had this blade, it's perfect. Let's try one more time with a little bit closer. That is a neat feature because it gives you two tools in one, although it's not exactly perfect. You could take this blade and flip it around and use it backwards also. Now I will say the one thing that I've had, not issue with this saw, but when I'm trying to put blades in, uh, doesn't always want to accept them easily. And I think that's maybe because of how it's all put together with the multiple types you just have to get it in that right spot and it'll grab onto it. And in this case, you follow, there it is. You find how it just sits up against. And I think this is more of a, a, a me not used to it much, but I'm wondering how it goes in this direction, which would be more like a jigsaw to a point. Either way, whatever suits your fancy, it cuts. So while we're using this out, there was a comment on our channel on a different one-handed recip saw where they talked about how a fine tooth blade could affect the performance on a short stroke compared to something that's really rough like that guy, or even just a simple carbide. So let's just make some cuts through here with these three different blades and see how this half inch stroke works out. So 
So you could see I had a lot of vibration in the beginning when this whole unit was moving around, finally got my foot in it. I think that's a little bit of my fault, but I will definitely say there was some vibration, especially when the shoe was not up against the wood. Let's try to take this guy down, see if a little bit more beefy blade makes a difference. definitely felt like it took a little bit longer without a doubt. I uh, felt like I had to try to clean it out more and I'm getting more vibration if I push a little bit too hard for this. So let's try something a little more aggressive. That still went fairly quick, but I want to go back to this because that might be onto something. I felt like, I feel like I'm cleaning out the blade quite a bit with this shorter stroke, but let's just see how this goes again. That's definitely interesting. Let's make a few cuts through this electrical conduit, see how it does. Still getting a little bit of vibration. Let's see if I can calm that down. A lot of that's going to be based off of the whole vice moving, but you're going to get that in the real world. So even if I move up here, let's go one more. Not too bad. So in using this tool, one thing I really like is your work stop adjustment. You can basically line this up in multiple different places to not only work in different parts of the blade, but also use it as a jigsaw. This does not move forward and back and rock. So it's easier to use it as a jigsaw in that manner. It does have a nice LED light that's gonna come on, although it's on top of the blade, not giving you a lot of light underneath here. It's gonna give you more light up top, very little, at, if any, on the bottom. It is what it is in that situation. The trigger is nice and smooth. The lock on and lock off button, there's not much movement there. That's it, it is very short. And I found myself every once in a while locking it with my thumb and then pushing it on the other side to unlock it. Not a huge deal, I'm just, you know, I get we have to have a lock on some of these for different ratings, but I would prefer that the lock had a little bit longer throw. I don't think I would mess with it if it did. This little guy on the back is interesting. If you love it, great. If you hate it, you can easily remove it. Uh, I'm really not sure why it's there. Uh, maybe somebody else can make a comment on that. As far as taking a blade on and off, it seems to take them out fine. And once you get used to it, it puts them in fine. Now, I do seem to once in a while have an issue where I'll, I'll hit something and I'll have to turn that twice. But it seems like it's pretty good. Now, if I get used to these blades, if I get this in here, I have to put it up in and find the side 
and then I'm good. Boom. It takes a little bit of getting used to. You have to, there's a little bit of a divot on this side. So once you go into place, boom. So once you know how to put one of these in, you can do it very quickly without issue, but you just have to slide it in and down and boom, you're good. I think it's just a little bit of getting used to this guy compared to some of the others that you work with because it will accept other blades. Now, I could be completely wrong that the T-shank blades go into just this model and not a lot of the other ones. So I haven't seen that before. If you have, I would be very interested to know in the comments because I think that makes this very versatile to accept jigsaw blades, especially when you're in a pinch. So we have a small tool, 3.5 pounds, can use multiple different batteries, takes jigsaw blades plus normal recip saw blades, adjustable shoe, small stroke, and a brushed motor. Not a brushless motor, a brushed motor. So that to me is a little bit interesting as to what's going on here. I can see how they could do that for maybe a little bit of low end power, a little bit of more control, but today's brushless motors are pretty good at that also. It all depends on how it's all put together. There's a few things here that are going to put people off and there's a few things here that people are gonna really grab onto and be like, yes, I can use that for multiple things. So I always, I'm more curious as to what you guys are thinking with all the specs laid out in front of me. To me, I like the idea that I can pop a jigsaw blade into it and use it when I'm in a pinch. Uh, on the other hand, I go, okay, uh, for this one guy who is going to use jigsaw blades and try to prune his tree, I mean, he's just going to break a lot of jigsaw blades. But use it used in the right capacity, it's a pretty cool tool. Maybe that half inch stroke is because it accepts jigsaw blades and you start getting to a three quarter inch stroke trying to use a jigsaw blade and that might really mess things up. It, it's an interesting dynamic of how it's put together and I wonder in my head how that's gonna affect how many people are going to purchase it. So that's why I'm asking you guys just to see. I like it for its use and I've had a couple uses lately that I could say, hey, pop a jigsaw blade in this thing and I'm in business. I don't have to run back and grab a different tool. That's cool to me. Um, again, I'm just gonna defer to you guys. So. Last comment that someone else made on one of our videos was that Metabo is an off-brand, not Metabo HPT, just Metabo was an off-brand tool that wasn't cool to use. And I found that very interesting, one, because the, not that the person's a bad guy or anything, but that the person cared what other people thought of the tools he was using. I think anybody with any skill can use any of the good tools. And we've showed, you know, maybe not the Chinese junk, although a lot of the stuff, where's this guy made? Made in China. Uh, but at the same point, uh, you know, a quality tool in someone's hands who are skilled, they can get the job done. They can get it done, done pretty quickly. Um, what's the matter what tool you're using as long as you're good at what you do? interested to know that too. So that was a comment where I was surprised because Ma Metabo made a lot of industrial tools, really good tools for a long time, very, very expensive tools out of the reach of many of the even contractors that were using it. And then when they bought uh, Metabo and HPT came in, which was really Hitachi came under Metabo. I mean, they didn't change anything. They didn't change the tool. They got a lifetime warranty and everything. I thought that was kind of neat and it gave them a name and I thought it gave him a name, they didn't. So again, I guess I'm curious on that. If you're still around here listening, comment below on what you think of that name change. Was it a good or a bad thing? Hitachi tools have always been good to us and the Metabo HPTs have been no different. So very interested, sorry to drag this on with questions, but I get a lot of these comments and it's interesting to see what people are thinking and if it's you know just little sections of people or if it's large groups and some of these comments come you know, multiple times. So you have to wonder what everybody's really thinking in their head is green cool or not. As always guys, we appreciate your time. Give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again, have a great day.